everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victor Melcher and today I'm gonna to share some video editing tips for beginner filmmakers. So a couple months ago, I made some editing tutorials for both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and they were more on the technical side of things, just how to get your edit done from start to finish. But today I'm gonna to share some editing tips from a storytelling perspective. So tip number one is to plan your cuts. So you can do this before or during your shoots. It really depends on the type of project. If you're shooting a short film, a spec ad, or a mini doc, you can plan it before. If you're shooting something more run and gun, like a wedding or some behind the scenes videos, and it could be for some mini documentaries where you don't necessarily know what you're filming, it's just kind of unraveling, but planning your cuts will definitely make it a lot easier when it comes time to actually edit the footage. And for planning the cuts before, you can do this in both storyboards and shot lists. Storyboards, you can take some time and draw the frames exactly how you envision, and the drawing does not need to be good. Here's some of my storyboards, they're terrible but they literally helps me craft each scene and it helps me run through things a lot quicker. And the really nice thing about them is that if you get lost during shoots, which has happened to me a bunch of times, you can always just look back at your storyboard and it'll kind of just set you back on track. And also what helps is making shot lists and you can actually make them on your phone, which is really cool. You just type it down in your notes and you can make it like a checklist. So that way, as you're going through your shoot, you can just check off each shot because then you can either wrap up early or just try to get some spontaneous shots. Hey everyone, Editor Victor here. So I noticed I forgot to talk about how to plan your cuts during your shoot, so I'll get into that right now. So as you're shooting, just take mental notes of each shot and figure out how you're gonna cut it into the next one. So for example, say if you're covering a behind the scenes photo shoot, first you might wanna get the photographer shooting the photo, and then you might wanna switch around and get the talent that they're shooting. So you can just kind of have two different angles and it can transition pretty easy. It's a very simple thing to do, but when you're running around, it can be a little hard to multitask, but just practicing this over time with each shoot you get, it'll definitely help you with each edit. So tip number two is to reverse the clip. Reversing a clip can help you in two situations. Say you're getting a shot and you really like it, you have like a couple seconds and then you just push your camera down a little too quick. It can help you in that sense. And it can also help you say if someone's doing something and maybe instead of them like taking it away, you need them to put it back. And I'll actually pull up an example right now so you can see what I'm talking about. So last year I shot a Glossier spec ad and there was one shot that I wanted to put in the edit, but as you can see, I just pulled away a little too quickly and I needed it to be exactly that length to fit with the rhythm of the song. And yeah, you can slow down the footage, but if you're shooting 24 frames per second, when you start to slow down footage, it'll look choppy very quickly. So I just didn't want to do that. So I actually just reversed the clip and it gives me that cool whip pan effect. So yeah, that was just a short example. But one of the things that will be a dead giveaway if you try to reverse a shot is cars. So if you're trying to, so if you have any cars in the shot, you can't reverse it, but try it and hopefully that makes it in the final edit. Tip number three is to always hit command S. Just make this a habit because it's really easy as you're editing just to get in the zone and locked in and focused and that's great. But the worst thing that happens is when you're focused and you're an hour into the edit and it's going great. And then all of a sudden, How about now, you're still wired in? And in all honesty, it's kind of become an obsession of mine. I hit command S like literally every minute, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So tip number four is to have rhythm. What I mean by this is if you're editing a video to a song, which can happen for a lot of things, try to make it follow the rhythm of the song. It's such a simple thing that you can do and it can make all the difference when you're watching it because I have seen some videos where the cuts are not matching the song at all and it just feels out of sync. Here's an example of an edit with rhythm. And here's an example of an edit without rhythm. Overall, it just makes the video much more enjoyable as a whole. Tip number five is to tell the story. If you can tell the story through your edit, your overall project will just have a lot more heart, even if the footage isn't the best, which this can happen both on projects that you're shooting or maybe projects that you've gotten handed to you. For example, I had gotten a video to edit from a nonprofit and they already had the footage, I just needed to edit it. When they sent it to me, I looked at the folder and it was vertical iPhone footage. It was footage from an older DSLR camera. In that situation, I was forced to focus on the story. Um, this is a nonprofit for an after school education program, which I really like what they do. Um, so I just made that the focus. I told the story. I used the interview footage from the kids. And overall, it was probably one of my more heartfelt edits, which I'm really happy about. So try to tell the story. A lot of times you can even see in like documentaries from a VHS camera or 
the audio is terrible, but the way they edit it and the way they incorporate it into the story is so profound and it, it works. I think it could be really easy to get caught up in trying to make something look cool, but sometimes it doesn't have to look cool. Sometimes it just has to be a story and that's really important. All right, so tip number six is to incorporate B-roll. This can be especially important if say you're shooting long interview footage and you wanna make it entertaining, say for a mini documentary, just maybe something where you have footage of someone talking. For example, like me talking in front of the camera, if I didn't incorporate any B-roll footage, this video would probably feel a lot more boring and go by a lot longer. It's something that I'm still working on of trying to incorporate more of, but B-roll footage can just make your edit a lot less dry. And tip number seven is to practice, practice, practice. When you're first starting out, the editing software will look intimidating. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. You might accidentally press a key and it'll be a shortcut and you're trying to figure out how to get back to your arrow, but just don't freak out, take your time. Get through those awkward edits because the first ones, you might just be kind of trying to figure out the software and even figure out what you're shooting and figure out what you're doing. If there's something that you're stuck on, whether it's an export setting or something like that, um, just YouTube it. And I'll be completely honest, sometimes I still get anxiety because I'm not sure if I will be able to make an edit work. But once I start editing, everything that I've learned over the past few years feels like it's all kind of combined and kicks in and it's like second nature. So yeah, just practice and don't be too hard on yourself. So that's it for today's video. I just wanna say thank you for watching and feel free to let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.